fair Queen of England. Welcome, Prince, and welcome, my Lord Oxford. Worthy Margaret, sit down with us as doth befit thy state. No oh, mighty King of France, now Margaret must strike her sail and learn a while to serve where kings command. I was, I must confess, great Albion's queen in former golden days. But now mischance hath trod my title down, and with dishonor laid me on the ground where I must take like seat unto my fortune, and to my humble seat conform myself. Whate'er thy fortune still be like thyself, come, sit thee by our side. Now, tell thy grief. We'll ease thee if we can. Men know my liege. My Henry is deposed and exiled. As proud, ambitious Edward, Duke of York, usurps the title and the regal throne. This is the cause that I, poor Margaret, am come to crave thy just and lawful aid. And if thou fail us, all our hope is done. Renowned queen, with patience, calm the storm, while we do seek a means to break it up. But see where comes the breeder of our sorrows. Ah, now begins a second storm to rise. For this is he that moves both wind and tide. Welcome, brave Warwick. What brings thee to France? From worthy Edward, king of Albion, I come in kindness and unfinished love. Uh, first to do greetings to thy royal person, and then to crave a league of amity, and lastly, to confirm that amity with nuptial knot, if thou vouchsafe to grant him the virtuous Lady Bona, thy fair sister. If that go forward, Henry's hope is done. And gracious madam, in our king's behalf, I am commanded with your leave and favor, humbly to kiss your hand, and with my tongue to tell the passion of my sovereign's heart, where fame, late entering at his heedful ears, hath placed thy beauty's image and thy virtue. King Lewis and Lady Bona hear me speak. This suit springs not from Edward's honest love, but from deceit bred by necessity. For how can tyrants safely govern home unless abroad they purchase great alliance? Injurious Margaret. And why not queen? Because thy father Henry did usurp. And thou no more art prince than she is queen. queen Margaret. Edward and Oxford, vouchsafe at our request to stand aside while I use further confidence with Warwick. Heaven grant that Warwick's words bewitch him not. Now Warwick can tell me, even upon my conscience, is Edward your true king? I swear he is. But is he gracious in the people's eye? The more that Henry was unfortunate. Then further, all dissembling set aside, tell me the measure of his love for Bona. Such as beseems a monarch like himself. Say, sister, what is your resolve in this? I must confess that often ere this day, when I have heard your king's desert recounted, mine ear hath tempted judgment to desire. Then Warwick thus, our sister shall be Edward's. Draw near, Queen Margaret, and be a witness that Bona shall be wife to the English king. Deceitful Warwick. It was thy device by this alliance to make void my suit before thy coming Louis was Henry's friend. And still is friend to him and Margaret. But if your title to the crown be weak, then tis but reason that I be released from giving aid, which late I promised. Yet shall you have all kindness at our hand that your estate requires, and mine can yield. Henry hath hid his exiled head in Scotland, where having nothing, nothing can he lose. And as for yourself, our quondam queen, you have a father able to maintain you, and better twere you trouble him than France. Proud, set her up and pull her down of kings. I will not hence. So with my talk and tears, both full of truth, I make King Louis behold thy sly conveyance and thy lord's false love. Warwick, there is some post to ask for thee. Lord Ambassador, these letters are for you, sent from your brother, Marquis Montague. These from our king and to your majesty. Oh, madam, these for you, from whom I know not. My 
like it well that our fair queen and mistress smiles at her news while Warwick frowns at his. Nay, mark how Lewis to the stamp as he were nettled. I <laughs> was for the best. What are your news? <laughs> Mine? Such as fill my heart with unhoped for joy. Mine full of sorrow and heart's miscontent. What? Has your king married the Lady Grey? And now, to soothe your forgery, and he sends me a paper to persuade me patience? Dare he presume to scorn us in this manner? I told your majesty as much before this fool is Edward's love and Warwick's honesty. He knows that. I here protest in sight of heaven and by the hope I have of heavenly bliss that I am free from this misdeed, Edward. <laughs> no more my king, for he dishonors me. <laughs> And to repair my honor lost for him, I here renounce him and return to Henry. My noble queen, let former grudges pass. For henceforth I am thy true servitor. Warwick, these words have turned my hate to love, and I forgive and quite forget old faults, and joy that thou art become King Henry's friend. So much his friend, that if it please his majesty to furnish me with arms and ships of war, I repart Henry in his former state, and force false Edward from his seat by war. Then England's messenger return in post and tell false Edward, thy supposed king, that Louis of France is sending over maskers to revel it with him and his new bride. Tell him, in hopes he prove a widower shortly. I'll wear the willow garland for his sake. Tell him, my mourning weeds are laid aside and I am ready to put armor on. Tell him from me that he has done me wrong. And therefore, I'll uncrown him ere to be long. There's thy reward, the God. Now, Warwick, thou and Lord Oxford, with five thousand men, shall cross the seas and bid false Edward battle. And as occasion serves, this noble queen and prince shall follow with a fresh supply. God grant you fortune in this high attempt. I long till Edward fall by war's mischance for mocking marriage with a dame of France. Had he none else to make a stale but me? Then none but I shall turn his jest to sorrow. I was the chief that raised him to the crown, and I'll be chief to bring him down again. It is not his new-made bride shall succor him. Not that I pity Henry's misery, but seek revenge on Edward's mockery. Mm -hmm. 